to be engaged and interested and involved in all sorts of government in order to make sure that everybody is accurately represented in and among city governance. And we really need to make sure that we're encouraging people to join boards, get on city and municipal governmental um, commissions, and just so that we can constantly be moving forward, constantly have a new thought process, constantly have new fresh ideas coming into these organizations, because that is how, as a community, we will grow. We're gonna grow through those fresh ideas. And it's through those difficult conversations that we're having now, and we have been having for several months, that new ideas grow and that new participation happens and new people get involved in their city. And that is the engine of a dynamic city. Uh, recently, somebody was texting with me and they're asking me about all of these difficult conversations we've been having. And I said, if we were not having difficult conversations as a city, that is not a sign of a dynamic municipality. A dynamic municipality is constantly growing, constantly asking questions, constantly changing to adapt to a new future. And so what we've been having is a lot of difficult conversations, but in my mind, that is just the hallmark of a really dynamic community and a, a community that's willing to grow and change for the future. And so I really thank you guys for coming out today. I'm thank you for uh, being inspired to learn about uh, advisory boards and commissions and everything else. I know a lot of times working with municipal governments isn't always the sexiest thing that you can talk about, but it's something that really helps the economic engine, helps the entire community forward. And so I'm just thankful that you gave up your lunch today to talk to us and listen to us talk. Um, city Council in Cape Girardeau is made up of all our representatives from across all of the wards of the city of Cape. Each of those representatives has an individual vote and those votes come together in order to form a unanimous decision or a non-unanimous decision. And those votes are how uh, the city runs, that's how we put together our budgets, that's how we do everything in this community. Additionally, city council will also approve people who have applied to be on municipal boards. And so those boards will get recommendations from other board members, and then we will move that process forward through to consideration and finalization. A couple of years ago, the City of Cape put together Citizens Academy, and Citizens Academy is exactly what we've been talking about, trying to get more people engaged in municipal governance. And so the Citizens Academy really does help people get to understand the City of Cape Girardeau. Uh, it, it's tough, and, and you don't often think about it, but the water we drink that comes out of our faucet is a faction of the city of Cape Girardeau. Every street, every sidewalk, every, uh, everything that you see that, that goes on in all of our parks and all of our different recycling organizations, those are all functions of the city of Cape Girardeau. And so you have to realize that there are so many facets, and through the Citizens Academy, you can get to learn about all of the facets of governance and you can really understand what impacts the city of Cape on a daily basis. Um, and so if anybody isn't or hasn't been a part of Citizens Academy, I really encourage you to sign up for Citizens Academy. Um, if you have been a part of the Citizens Academy, you know how valuable of an experience and how valuable that is to get to know your community. And so it's really just a fantastic thing for people to understand and for people to get that deeper knowledge of what the community is, how the community functions, how the community budgets, and how we move forward as a group. Uh, somebody once said that a community is truly a, a conversation that happens among buildings, and that's very true. Uh, right now, we're not in the same building. It's not advisable to be in the same building, but virtually, this conversation is happening, and that is a sign of a dynamic community. And so I just thank you guys very much for taking the time today. Um, if you have any questions about boards, make sure that you reach out to your uh, city representatives, your city council members. Make sure you reach out to the council or to the city in general to ask them more questions about the different types of boards. And most importantly, if you are interested in joining a board, make sure you fill out the application. Uh, there is an actual application to apply to be on a board and you can list out all of your qualifications and all of your interests. And so it's just another way to let the city know, kind of raising your hand, letting the city know that you're ready to serve and that you're interested in being a, a more, a deeper member of the community, a person who is, uh, is, is working towards that future and a person who's giving their time to be on those boards. So thank you all very much for, for having me today. I, I do have a tendency to talk a lot, so I apologize, but um, I would like to take it over and, and, and hand it over to Julia Jones from the Parks and Recreation Department. So thank you all very much and welcome to this Advisory Board 101.
Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm Julia Jones. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for the city. I've been here for about nine years now, and we do have a number of boards that um, we love to have people uh, serve on uh, that really contribute a lot to not only the Parks and Recreation Department, but of course, overall the entire city. Um, Dan uh, serves on our currently on our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and provides kind of like that continuity um, from a council person back to uh, the Citizens um, Advisory Board there. And that, I think that makes a big connection uh, with people recognizing that not only does the city council get to hear the things that Dan reports back from Parks and Recreation, uh, but the, also that those board members feel connected to their, a little more connected to their city council. So just real quick, I'm gonna run through um, the boards that we have. Um, our first, of course, is the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, this board uh, exists to help provide uh, staff and council with their knowledge and expertise. Uh, they serve as ambassadors, obviously, to the community. We utilize our park board to be liaisons to um, our business community. We seek a lot of sponsorships and alternative revenue to help support uh, park programs that we are not able to um, fund through uh, city governance, especially in these um, challenging times, fiscally challenging times. They help us with um, leadership on any issues um, or projects you know, that we've got going on. We just recently renewed the Parks um, Recreation and Stormwater uh, tax in 2018. So there's a lot of things that are happening through that tax to help build uh, park amenities all around the community from trails to um, additions to community centers, uh, improvements to areas in I think almost every single ward, whether it be restrooms or maybe a new neighborhood uh, park for the Red Star area, which Dan's been closely involved in. So we're, we're, we're marching in those directions. Um, that tax uh, will be good all the way through 2033, I believe. So moving on to the tree board. Uh, the tree board, again, um, they are uh, made up of a group of folks that um, have knowledge and expertise in horticulture and arboriculture. So, of course, they provide their knowledge um, on uh, public trees. It's not just trees in, in your, uh, how, at your house or in your, at your business. It really has to do with trees on public property. We've been a Tree City USA for over 20 years um, trees provide not only aesthetic beauty, but they provide habitat, uh, stormwater relief. Um, of course, they do improve, improve property values. Some of the challenges that we have with our trees is that when they're planted, they're small, but a lot of times they're planted in the right of way and they get rather large. And so some of the challenges that we have is when we have um, infrastructure like street or road or sidewalk improvements, some of those trees have to be analyzed and potentially removed. And we do try to mitigate that tree removal by planting trees in other areas. But uh, we do have a tree ordinance. Um, annually, we participate in Missouri Arbor Day, which is always the first Friday in April with tree planting projects. And even in park projects, when we have to take down trees to make park improvements, we try to you know, triple plant. If we take down one tree, it might be a tree that's been around for 50, 60 years. Um, we try to plant you know, at least um, three to six times that many trees um, when we do park projects. The next one is our golf advisory board. Again, they are typically um, a pretty fairly narrowly focused board. Um, it was created to help provide a connection between when the JCs um, kind of uh, gave the uh, JC golf course to the city uh, many, many moons ago. So we have a liaison from the JCs on that board. Um, they serve as ambassadors to help us um, uh, make course improvements, uh, whether there's leadership um, guidance on any of the particular policies or rules that we have at the golf course, that board helps provide that um, kind of like a seamless interpretation of those. And then they provide volunteers for a lot of events and programs and tournaments that we do out at the golf course. We also have a beautification committee called Keep Cape Beautiful. Um, we're an affiliate with the national organization, Keep America Beautiful. We focus on city beautification, reducing litter, graffiti, um, providing education on recycling and reuse. We do an annual litter inventory. 
beautification. We provide a, a recognition for the beautiful business property of the month. And then we also provide um, information to our nuisance abatement with regards to properties that may be in disrepair. And then lastly, we have a parks and recreation uh, foundation, which is kind of a quasi board. The city council doesn't make appointments to that board. The board is a, its own nonprofit organization, but it liaisons with the city um, to help provide um, fiscal accounting support. And we do have uh, to keep that continuity. We have a representation from city council that sits on that Parks and Recreation Foundation board. And that board exists to help raise funds and provide um, additional support to uh, parks, recreation, properties, programs, and facilities that we're not able to fund through um, city tax dollars or our um, parks and stormwater tax. And I will hand it over to the next person. Thank you, Julia. Brian? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Shrumplin, and I'm the city planner. And uh, in the planning division, we are responsible for being the staff liaison to three of the city's advisory boards. Uh, I'll start with the Board of Adjustment. Um, that group uh, consists of five regular members and three alternate members, all of whom are appointed by the city council. Um, each member serves a five-year term, and they have a maximum of three consecutive full terms. Um, the Board of Adjustment meets on the first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m., and uh, their duties include reviewing applications for variances and liquor license requests for consent. Uh, the next uh, group is the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, that consists of nine regular members. There are no alternate members, and the members are appointed by the City Council. Um, each of those members serves a four-year term, again, with a three consecutive full-term limit. Uh, that group meets on the second Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m., and they review several different applications, including rezoning, special use permits, uh, exceptions, subdivision plats, uh, and they also are responsible for adopting the city's comprehensive plan, which they did last month, or actually earlier this month, uh, which is the K-Vision 2040 plan. Uh, in addition, uh, there are certain ad hoc committees that are formed um, from time to time, and uh, the commission has the ability to appoint uh, members to serve on those committees. A couple examples of that are the TTF, the Transportation Trust Fund Committee, and the Comprehensive Plan Oversight Committee. Uh, the next advisory board is the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, that consists of nine members appointed by the council, no alternates. Um, each of those members serves a three-year term, again, with a, a limit of three consecutive full terms. Uh, the HPC meets on the third Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m., uh, their duties include reviewing applications for local historic property designations and certificates of appropriateness, as well as reviewing National Register nominations, Section 106 projects, uh, and they also conduct various activities related to education and outreach on historic preservation issues. So if you have uh, interest or would like to learn more about any of those advisory boards, uh, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to uh, share that information with you. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Molly Maynard. I'm the Deputy City Manager and I'm going to talk about some of the other boards and commissions that we have um, here at the City of Cape Girardeau. So the first I'm going to talk about is our Airport Advisory Board. This is a nine-member advisory board that provides recommendations to airport staff and the City Council on airport operations, capital improvement projects, land acquisitions, um, and um, other operations out at the airport. It is one of our only boards that actually allows members from outside of Cape County. Um, and that's because it is a regional airport that serves um, not only Cape Girardeau County, but Scott County, Bollinger County. And so we do allow two members from outside of Cape County to serve on that board. Um, they meet the first Tuesday of every month out at the airport uh, over the lunch hour. Uh, the second board I want to talk about is our Liquor License Review Board. This is a three-member board, um, and they, their purpose is to review appeals from liquor license holders that may have received a suspension or a revocation of their license due to a uh, violations. And so if that happens to occur, uh, the liquor license holder can appeal to the Liquor License Review Board 
a hearing is held and the Liquor License Review Board will make a recommendation on the outcome of that, um, that request. Um, some of those cases do then get referred to the City Council for final outcome. The next is the Convention and Visitors Bureau Executive Board. This is a six member board. Three members are appointed by the City Council and three members are appointed by the Chamber of Commerce. The city manager does serve as one of the members, um, one of the city's representatives. And their uh, duties include providing oversight of the operations of the con visitor, excuse me, Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, including uh, providing input on methods of promoting tourism um, and conventions throughout the city. Um, and they meet um, periodically throughout the year. Uh, the Board of Appeals is another board that falls under the Development Services realm. It's not in the planning department where Ryan works, but it uh, falls more in inspection services. The Board of Appeals is made up of a variety of citizens with expertise in construction, uh, development, and they review appeals uh, to the city, uh, excuse me, the building code. So if a builder comes in and wants to deviate from something in the code, the Board of Appeals would review that and determine whether or not to grant an exception from that. Uh, they also review updates to the building code. So every year, few years, we periodically upgrade our um, building code to the next version, the, the most up-to-date. And we do a comprehensive review of the codes to make sure that it's consistent with the policy that the City Council has set and the direction that we wanna go. So in some cases we might um, exempt a portion of a code that uh, we find too onerous for our development community, or we might uh, request something additional. So they have that ability as well. And then the last one I'll talk about is our Tax Increment Finance Commission. This is actually a commission that is made up of 11 members of all of the taxing entities in the area. So the city of Cape Girardeau has six members appointed by the city council. There are two members from the Cape County, two members from the school district, and then the remaining uh, taxing entities, including the mental health board and the library, et cetera, appoint one representative to represent all of them. The Tax Increment Financing Commission, often what we refer to as the TIF Commission, reviews applications from uh, developers and builders for TIF assistance. Um, and TIF is a really complicated economic development tool that we use primarily in the downtown area. And if anyone ever wants a lesson on TIF, I'd be more than happy to explain how it works. It's not a, a pot of money that we have sitting around. It's actually a refund of taxes that the developer pays to uh, redevelop their property that they get refunded back um, over the course of a 23 year period. And that's a redevelopment tool incentive to help with some of the older buildings we have in the downtown area. So that is a really, really quick overview of what those boards and commissions do. And I think now Nicolette is gonna talk a little bit about how to apply and how you can get involved. Thank you very much. So I bet a lot of our attendees are thinking, wow, that's a lot of stuff. And you know what, that isn't even all of it. We didn't even cover every single one of the boards. Um, we can certainly do that as a, a separate lunch and learn event, or you can contact uh, folks individually about specific boards. But I just wanted to um, point everyone's attention to our website, cityofcape.org slash yourgov, is, will land you right on the boards and commissions page. They are each listed there alphabetically. You can apply online. You can click through and see a list of members, a general description of their activities, their meeting schedule, whether they're currently accepting applications or not, though you can apply at any time and then your uh, application is made available uh, for up to a year, I believe it is. So the apply online button's right there. You can um, print an application. And what they do is you go through and you fill out the answers to these questions here on your screen. So there's just some general contact information, employer uh, information, and the, the types of community involvement or education or whatever you think might uh, make you a good candidate for the different boards that you're interested in serving on. They keep those applications on file for up to a year, and then when the uh, positions become available, the city clerk's office will gather those items and um, get these applications to the council so they can review all the information about all the various candidates that are interested in serving. And like I said, all of that is available at cityofcape.org slash yourgov. 
Now, um, I think uh, some of our presenters noted that some of the um, boards have specific requirements um, to join. Some of them are very open-ended and anybody can apply um, if they live in the city with some exceptions like the uh, airport board. Um, but some of them do need to have some type of specific uh, education or, or um, affiliation. So that's all I had to add. So I figured uh, there might be plenty of questions. Um, you will have to unmute yourself and raise your hand or um, and that is, um, those of you on mobile devices, is actually on the bottom of your screen. There's a little hand um, that you have to tap, and then I can open up for questions. We have Michelle Jackson. Michelle, are you there? I'm pushing the wrong buttons, probably, Michelle. Can you try to unmute yourself again? There you are. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, sorry about that. Hello and welcome. So, um, will you guys be able to um, put all this information on Facebook? I noticed that there's been a lot of activity on the page and I wanted to see if there would be like some kind of tutorial video on how to like access the agendas and all that. Um, I know how to do it, but I don't know if anybody else knows how to do it. I think that's a great idea. And immediately after this event today, I'll put out a link to uh, this uh, video. And then I could just do a little click by click explainer video on how to get through and, and just uh, put that out there a, a little more for folks. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Nicolette, one thing I wanted to add, especially as part of this whole conversation around advisory board applications, um, recently there was a, a gentleman who lived in the, in Ward 1 and is more specifically in the Red Star neighborhood who was interested in, in joining a city board. And so he went through and submitted his application, but then he also sent me an introductory email, just introducing himself saying, hey, this is why I'm interested in this. He had kids that were involved in, uh, in all kinds of things here in the city of Cape Girardeau. And, and it was just a really good way to get to know somebody that's not on an application. And so I would recommend to anybody that's listening, as part of the application process, reach out to your council member and make sure that you introduce yourself, just so that that council member can then go and advocate on your behalf whenever an opportunity does come up to join uh, any of these boards or commissions. Thank you, Councilman. And I'll um, add that pro tip to the, uh, the post today. Thank you. Looks like Ms. Renita Green has a question. Yep, Julia's hand was up. Her real hand was up. So can I yield to Julia? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I miss Julia. I <laughs> know, oh, that's, that's quite all right. I also wanted to just um, bounce off of what Dan said and that I know all of our boards obviously are open to the public. Anyone is welcome to attend any of our meetings at any given, given time. We welcome, if you're interested in serving, you aren't sure which board you're interested, come sit through a meeting. The minutes are always available online so that you can see what our current projects and kind of focus is and um, to get the right fit, the right board fit for you. Um, they do give you options on like your first, second, third choice uh, for when you're making those uh, advisory board selections. And it does matter uh, the one that you select one. I mean, when I get applications or see applications that um, maybe has the parks and rec board as number three, that's somebody who I know may not be uh, as interested in parks and recreation as they may be, say, the airport um, or the liquor advisory board. So those are kind of things are very important when you fill out applications. Make sure that you put as much information as you can, and that helps in the selection process as well. I'm sorry, Renita. <laughs> Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. And that actually was part of... Um, my question. So in talking with people um, who have um, expressed some new interest in being part of um, the boards, there seems to be this idea that if you're not part of the inner circle of CAPE, that your application is not going to receive the same consideration as those who you know, are more known or more known to those who are making decisions. And um, given that, you know, a person can serve, you know, four years or five years and then have three terms, 
You know, we're looking at people on the same, the same people on boards for 12 to 15 years. And in some ways, that type of longevity on a board is good um, in that it provides some continuity in terms of projects and taxing and all of that. But in other ways, it serves as a hindrance for progress and for the opening up of opportunities for new people who might want to participate. So I'm wondering how the city staff or city council can help um, create ways for new people to ensure that they're going to receive um, serious consideration for participation on these different boards and even looking at processes, which I definitely don't expect to have a response for today, but, you know, looking at, looking at, you know, these term limits, maybe 12 or 15 years really is too long for a person to be on a board. So if, you know, does that mean maybe shortening a term from five years to two years or shortening the number of times that a person can be reappointed to the same board? Um, I'm, what I'm concerned about is as we have people trying to be interested and especially young people, you know, they're looking at wanting to be on a board, but if a space isn't going to open up for three to five years, you know, by that time, you know, life has moved on for them. And, um, and a bigger picture is we're looking at how do we retain people in CAPE and talent and, you know, with, with they don't have a place when people don't feel like there's going to be space for them, it's harder to connect them um, with um, being part of the city as a whole. So, um, so I think that part of my question, I think I just made a statement and didn't really ask a question. <laughs> no, it was good. It was perfect. <laughs> but, you know, maybe, I guess my question is not necessarily for an answer today, but maybe more so it, is that even possible for the city to look at the processes, the term limits, the length of terms, and figure out some maybe new ways that we can create opportunities for new people to come on board, maybe even reserving one of those openings for someone brand new and, you know, somebody who isn't familiar to us. You and know, you know, no, Renita, no. I think, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to say, I think, Renita, you hit the nail on the head. Um, a lot of times the actual term of the board, um, the timing of the meetings, a lot of those different things are impediments to a younger person applying for and being a successful candidate for a board. Um, there are a lot of boards that meet at times of day that unless, you, unless you're retired or you're, you're a business owner, you couldn't make it to if you right. were in, uh, you know, worked a regular nine to five type of job or eight to five type of job. And so that's something that has to be reviewed as, as we look towards the future of how we incorporate um, more people into city governance and get that, that interest in city governance rolling a lot more. I think a lot of that's going to have to be reviewed because you know, maybe somebody doesn't want to spend a five-year term. Maybe they want to do a two-year term. Maybe they can't meet at three in the afternoon, but they could do it at seven in the morning. And so there's just going to be a lot of things that have to be reviewed in order for us to modernize um, a, a pretty, you know, a pretty stoic old way of doing business in, in city governance. Um, but, but one thing that I do have to say is that there have been some, some good perks um, and, and positive stories. The gentleman that I uh, talked about who sent me an introductory email, what I was able to do with that introductory email was to send that out to the rest of the council members saying, here is a candidate that I think we need to consider for this, for this board. And so we've been able to be pretty successful with that. Additionally, I know the Historic Preservation Commission has actually gotten several young members recently that have gotten really excited about mm -hmm. historic preservation in the city of Cape. And so I think we're slowly working towards that, but some of those board positions that have uh, difficult meeting times, it, it really is going to be a hindrance to getting uh, younger people involved. Right, and I'm also concerned about diversity on the boards. When you look at the Planning and Zoning Commission, and it is one demographic on the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, you know, we, we need, we're, we're a diverse city, and we need women's voices, we need 
minority voices, we need younger voices. And that's also good training for younger people. So if we say people have to have X amount of experience, maybe what we can say is so many, such a percentage of the board members need to have such and such type of experience, but also leave that open for the student at, Vota, at the VOTAC who's learning construction management to have a seat on that board that is also a space where the younger voice can be heard and he or she is receiving some experience in um, how to navigate this space and how to participate. Um, so I, I, you know, just, yeah. You know, lots of different ways to try to think about how to do this differently. I'm sorry, Molly. Yeah, one thing I was going to say, and in some other communities, um, they oftentimes will have um, student members or you know a, a youth council. Yeah, capacity, Renita, where they they might have um, you know meetings of their own, but also then serve on the various boards and committees so that we do get that younger perspective. I do think that's important. And then, like you said, we also grow grow. Um, people to serve in the future. Um, yes. So that's something that I think perhaps we could talk about as well. I'd like to Thank say you. something. Uh, Renita, yeah, you're absolutely right. A lot of these things that you're suggestion, uh, suggesting, I think are very good ideas. Um, I did want to address a couple of things you brought up, one of them being uh, kind of the, the process and the criteria by which uh, advisory board members are selected. I obviously can't speak for the city council, but in my experience in working with our advisory boards, um, you know, they really look at the information that's submitted on the application. Um, and they do look to see what kind of experience the, the person has. They also look to see how high they rank that particular advisory board, like Julia mentioned. Uh, that is a very important uh, indicator of, of interest, I think, uh, as far as our boards are concerned. Um, and they do, I know certainly with the Star Preservation Commission in particular, they do look at it in terms of what this person will bring to the board that is different, that will help diversify viewpoints on the commission. Um, so I think, you know, to a certain extent, they already do that. I think some of the other boards probably can do that better, but, but really the Historic Preservation Commission by far has the most opportunity for that because they have a lot of turnover. And part of that is due to the fact that they have younger members. Some of them are college students or recently graduated. And sometimes we find it's hard for them to make that commitment, uh, particularly if they've got a new, new job, new career. Uh, they're certainly interested in, in being involved, but then you know, they end up getting relocated or they end up getting involved in other meetings and things outside of their normal work schedule that they hadn't anticipated. And they end up you know, having to resign. So we do have a lot of turnover on that particular commission. Uh, and part of it is due because the younger folks, you know, they, they sometimes have trouble being able to keep the commitment. Um, but we certainly encourage new ideas, new people to come uh, to present, you know, and, and uh, apply for the positions. And that is something that our, our boards do consider when they're making a recommendation to the council. Thank you, Ryan. Can I, You're welcome. Can I just jump in real quick? Um, Stacy Kinder, um, just heard a, a lot of, of uh, great ideas. Um, and actually, I just wanted to add, like this whole conversation I, um, is one that I know Dan and I have had um, together, uh, really, for since we got on the city council for two, over two years ago. Um, because I, I, I do think it's fair to say you, you, uh, you can see some of the same people you know, being um, voted on uh, to, to join these um, uh, boards and commissions. Um, certainly that's easier when, when someone is, is running to, to be, you know, to, to do an additional term. Um, you know, you, you think they have three or four years experience and um, keeping that wisdom in that, in that board or commission is, is sometimes uh, very appealing. Um, but um, to your point, Renita, um, I think I think it, I think you're, it's fair to say that, and, and Dan mentioned this too. Um, having having new perspectives, um, certainly having some diversity, uh, having um, you know fresh fresh ideas, I think is good for any organization. Um, so I, I 
I don't know the process by which the council needs to dig into some of these, uh, you know, terms and limits and things like that, but I, I'm definitely interested in, in looking into it and bringing it up to the full council. Um, there's been questions, I mean, we mentioned, some Some of you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the idea of, of having spots, you know, for younger people or, um, uh, we've even talked about, you know, we, we have several rounds of Citizens Academy participants um, who are now looking to join boards. Um, I mean, because we're getting their applications. Um, I don't know that we've had much success really in getting those people on boards as the spots have come up in the past year. Um, and so what are we, what are we allowed to do, you know, in terms of, of creating spots for, for example, Citizens Academy graduates? Um, I don't know, but I, I do want to look into it um, because certainly, you know, the whole point um, is that, uh, as several people have mentioned, um, we're gathering more people um, who are interested in city governance. Um, a board or a commission is a great way to start getting some of that experience. And, and I think it was to, to Molly's point, you know, ultimately then you have people who are uh, well prepared to be council members in the future. So, um, mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I think it's all great points and, and we will, uh, I'd like to very much look into it. Maybe I'm thinking just a little too simplistically, but it seems like if this is like our rules that we created at some point, like we can make new rules. That's where the yeah, rules. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in knowing, you know, what's spelled out in our city charter. Yeah, um, yeah. versus what is an ordinance or, or whatever. Um, yeah, if it's in our city charter, that, that, you know, changing a city charter uh, issue um, is, is a huge, huge, yeah, yeah. huge deal. Um, but yeah, no, I, I see your point, Renita. I, I agree. Um, I, I'm very much uh, like asking the question of why is this rule this way and does it need to be changed? So. Well, thank you. I know on the Board of Adjustment, a lot of those uh, parameters are established by state statute. So some of that we're not able to change. We did look into changing that years ago, and unfortunately, we found we're not able to. Now, I don't know about term limits, but as far as number of members on the boards and alternates and things like that in terms, uh, a lot of that is established by the statute. So in those cases, we're not able to make those changes. But for things that aren't required by the statute, that is something we, we have the ability to look at. Good information, thank you. Yeah, if there is a consensus of the city council to move forward with a review and analysis of, of our boards and commissions, and we would have staff uh, essentially do uh, an assessment of you know, which boards are dictated by state statute, which are by city charter, which are by ordinance, um, so that we would have a comprehensive picture of what would need to happen if changes were desired. Um, so that will help with the council's decision-making process as well. That's great. How do we get that onto the council agenda? So our policy is that we need three council members uh, to agree that it should be on an agenda. And if once we have three, then we will put it on an agenda for discussion. Thank you. Um, well, I will, um, I will put that forward to the council, Molly, uh, to see if to determine, you know, to get the, is it three or four? I believe it's three. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll ask council about that and see if we can, um, you know, find that number to uh, to consider that. Thank you. Great. Well, not to put anybody on the spot, but we do have three council members on this call. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know what the what the requirements are for for webinars and stuff. Does it have to be in writing? We we don't need the three council members to have it in writing. We just need consensus from three council members that an item is worthy of being agenda sized. Hey, well, I second Stacy's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We do have a, a hand raise from Miss Michelle Jackson. Is there a way we can access the charter? I did just put a link in the chat box and then I can email that to you or however you want me to get it to you afterward too. But if you go to cityofcape.org slash law, there is a button there to our charter and to our ordinances. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am.
Well, what other questions do we have from anybody? Hi guys, I'm it's your Tess Robinson. Hi. I'm actually here. I'm actually in Target right now. It's my grandma's birthday and I was just listening in. But I absolutely agree with Renita, Stacy, and Dan. Like things have to be changed. You just have to take that step forward. Whatever you need to do to get it done, it's just at this point, get it done. Um, things are happening, lives are at stake, people are scared. We have to bring back that sense of that sense of okay, that sense of inclusion, that sense of your opinion matters. So mm -hmm. I agree completely. Exactly. And it's people like you that we need to have you on these boards because you bring fresh ideas and you bring a whole nother sense of energy to a lot of different ideas that are presented to the city. And so it's your generation that we're going to need to adapt in order to make sure that you can participate and that you will participate and that whenever the time comes, we can get you on those boards. Absolutely. That's why when I seen this post and I seen that this webinar was absolutely happening, it was a must that I took in because it was just like, this is amazing. Like people don't understand. And I even had to share it on my social media so people would understand. Like, this is how, this is how it's done. You first get informed about local government and then you get involved. Like this is happening. Like just step up, step up to the plate. And that's all it's taken. Well, thanks for being here and thanks for, for helping to promote it. Yeah. Um, we did have your time at Target. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy birthday, grandma. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to remain. We did have a. I don't want. I don't want people looking at me like, "Hey, who's that guy talking to over there in the aisle by himself?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have a question from uh, Philip, just asking about the uh, Citizen Academy. Just to let you all know, it was an in-person, uh, two-hour, uh, one day a week for eight to ten week uh, class, and folks got to go in and tour departments and get a lot of hands-on learning and meet their officials and. Um, we certainly all had a lot of fun together in that program. However, when the world fell apart in March and the pandemic hit, we just thought it was ill-advised to gather people in groups for that program. So we're dipping our toe in the water to see how effective some virtual options are. Um, we do have another question from Nita. Is your hand up? And I, I hesitate to use the word hot mic right now, but I do believe we are having a hot mic situation in the target. Uh -oh. Gotcha. Renita, did you have another question? I see your hand up. Me? No, my hand's okay. not up on purpose. Oh, my bad. Okay. We are right at time. Did anyone have any other questions? Um, no, not at all, but I had one more comment. I just want to thank everybody who came, like, who put this together and did everything like that. Like, I personally feel like this is amazing. And I personally feel like a lot more people will be willing to get involved if they know how. So I just feel like kudos, congrats, Stacey, Dan, uh, Miss Renita, everybody on this webinar. Thank you guys so much. Like, it's a change and we can see it. Yep. That's awesome. Thank you for that feedback. Well, everyone have a wonderful day. If you have any other um, questions or issues that pop up, uh, you can find all of our contact information, council member, staff, everybody at cityofcape.org slash contact. Um, you've got our uh, social media text call email right there on the screen. Um, have a wonderful and safe day and stay in communication with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.